Phil Kroger. I'm, I'm an attorney in California, and I represent mostly marijuana clients in California and around the United States in federal court. When I first started, my career uh, started early in, medic in uh, marijuana cases because I was uh, hired on this big case, a 2,000 pound case, it was about 10 years ago, and we found in looking through the warrants that the police had not uh, used probable cause to search a house, and we fought this case in court, and we won, and a 2,000 pound case of marijuana was dismissed, and our clients were released from jail that day. A lot of clients that I meet and pe people I defend are really nice people. And we the pot growers and pot dealers and people that deal with pot are genuinely nice people. They care about people and they're easy to deal with. Um, well, in Los Angeles, I, I represent probably about 20 different dispensaries. But typically, what, what we do is we, you know, we have open line of communication. If they have a question, they'll call me, and if I don't know the answer, we'll research and get back to them. Um, I'm kept on retainer by quite a few of these people, and if an unforeseen event happens where the DEA or the police department decides to raid them, we'll be there on the spot. In, in my class at Oaks Dam, I cover the federal law, the uh, federal sentencing guidelines, um, what the mandatory minimums are. In other words, if you're arrested with you know, X amount of marijuana, do you face a mandatory minimum? And if you do face a mandatory minimum, what can you do to get below it? Um, I also discuss how under federal law, any possession or any type of marijuana crime is illegal 100% under federal law. Well, it's important because you want people to know what they're getting involved with. Um, if, for instance, somebody comes and says, I want to open a dispensary right here, it's legal under California law. Well, clearly we have to tell them it might be legal under California law, but it's not legal under the federal law. And how are you going to feel at night? Are you going to be able to sleep knowing that the DEA can come and knock on your door at any minute? We're rescheduling work. Rescheduling won't work. Right now, the reason that you need a recommendation and not a prescription is because of Schedule 1 and doctors can't prescribe Schedule 1 drugs, so they can only recommend it. So rescheduling is really not going to have any effect on it. It'd have to be deschedulized, meaning taken off any type of narcotic schedule or uh, controlled substance act scheduling. I hope that the United States will come to acknowledge industrial hemp for what it's worth and we'll start allowing more of it to be used in the United States and processed in the United States. Um, unfortunately, it goes hand in hand, hemp and cannabis for, for you know, illicit use or medical use goes hand in hand with industrial hemp. Um, therefore, it, it's preventing it from coming here. If the push keeps going as it is or we, we get to this, this edge where the state's rights are finally um, the federal government is giving in, I think it will do a lot of good for people. I think that medical cannabis is uh, something that the federal government really needs to learn about and do more studies on, and, and they need to figure out how they're going to tax it so that the way they can legalize it. And I think that might be a big problem. Hi, I'm Bill Kroger. I'm here with Eyes on TV. Um, remember, stay legal and stay within the limits in California. You won't get in any trouble. Uh, if you need any help from me, please give me a call at area code 323-655-5700 or visit our, any one of our websites, krogerlawgroup.com or 420attorney.com. Thank you and have a great day.